Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about new type and how it relates to aliases and how you might use it in your program. Uh, let's jump into it. All right, so what new type is, is a way to create a kind of typing time only fake type that represents a strict subclass of your particular code. Uh, since we're working with typing, we're going to set up MyPy and we're going to show some small examples. Um, okay, run my pi over here. Okay, so for new type, uh, you can do from typing import new type. And the way new type works is you construct it very similarly to either a type variable or an alias. Uh, you give it some sort of name. Uh, let's say we have a uh, business ID, for example. And a new type takes a type as, or the type name is the first argument, so it's always going to be you know, the same same name as what you're assigning it to. And then the second argument is the actual subclass of what you're going to be using. So let's say that a business ID is always an integer. And what this kind of does, what you can think of it as doing, is making something like this, um, or at least that's how it appears to the type checker. So it creates a kind of imaginary subclass that can allow you to constrain your APIs to only take particular types. Um, but this can be substitutable anywhere else. And it actually has no over runtime overhead. So if you do from typing import new type and t equals new type t, let's say int. Oops. Uh, if we call t on this, it's actually just going to return back the original value. Uh, so they are referentially equal. This is just a, a pass through function at runtime. It doesn't actually do anything. Uh, it does have a tiny, teeny, tiny amount of overhead because it has to call this function, uh, but it, it generally has no runtime overhead behind be, beyond that. Uh, but what this allows you to do is it allows you to define APIs that specifically take this uh, special subclass of your integer type and disallow other random integers at runtime. So we may, you know, have something like this, and without new type, you would just say int, and you know, maybe. This does some sort of lookup. Uh, I don't know. Let's say stir, and it does like I don't know <laughs> uh, to do some database lookup. Uh, let's call this business name or something, um, etc. And you know we're not going to actually fill out the the implementation of this, but you can imagine that this would take a business ID and look it up in the database and turn back the name. Uh, but our type here is just integer, and so you may accidentally pass in some value here that you don't expect to be the right value. Maybe it's like an index or something, and like you know, you called business business name on, I don't know, four. <laughs> like it, you, you didn't actually have a business ID, and so calling this uh, API is not exactly what you would want. And fortunately, if you, well, right now if we run this, MyPy is gonna be like, yeah, that's fine, no, no issues here. Uh, but if we would have specifically typed this as a business ID, um, MyPay is going to prevent this call here because it has an incompatible type. Like we we force this to have this our special new type type, and we can't get anything else out of that. Um, and you might you know of course have like lookup business by name, which has some stir. And normally you would have this return int, but since we have our own special business ID. Uh, we can implement our own logic here. So let's say that we had somehow gotten uh, this from our database, and it had you know ID four and you know, name my business or whatever it is. Uh, but pretend pretend this came from the database. Now what you actually want to do is if we just return this directly, business ID. Uh, oops, want to do that. Um, Oh, actually, <laughs> let's pretend that we had, because uh, MyPy is inferring that this is dictionary stir to object because it doesn't actually see the rest of that. Uh, so we're just going to pretend this is a named tuple real quick um, that maybe we got from our database. Business named tuple. So let's say that we got this from our database, business ID equals four, name equals my business. And maybe this is like a SQL alchemy object or something else like that, uh, not just the fake name tuple that I've done here. If we did this return here, uh, we'll notice that MyPy is again going to complain because we've returned just an integer here and not our actual business ID type. 
And the way we convert into our specialized new type is by calling the new type there. So now this this will um, you know force this value to be this particular type. We are allowed to convert from the integer uh, the type that new type specifies into this value because it basically acts as a, a subclass. Uh, and at runtime, it's not going to do anything different. So this is this is always going to return a business ID. The other cool thing that this lets us do is because this is a subclass of integer, it allows us to constrain what sort of operations you can do on it. So if we did uh, business one equals lookup business by name uh, foo, and we looked up another business by bar, uh, we can't do nonsensical things like uh, print business one plus business two. Like there's you know, adding two business IDs together doesn't really make sense. Uh, <laughs> wait, why does my pilot do that? Wait, it's not supposed to let us do that. Uh, I guess if you, um, I don't know, we should get that other. Oh, I know what, what it'll allow us to do. So if we do get business name, uh, business ID, business ID, stir that same function that we had before. If we did get business name here, this is not going to work, I think. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Uh, because the addition here is going to give us, it's going to promote it back to an integer uh, and not our special subclass here. And so, you know, doing nonsensical operations on this can can be forbidden in ways. Um, and most most of the use cases that I've seen for this is to have specialized types that are kind of segregated from their actual types and uh, allow you to constrain APIs like this. Um, in other languages, well, I don't actually know. If this was just something a coworker told me, but I think in other languages they call this tiny types, or at least that's <laughs> that's what they told me. So if you've heard if you've heard the name tiny types, this is basically an implementation of tiny types. Now, uh, what I wanted to talk about here is the differentiation between uh, new type, which is you know explicitly making a subclass, and an alias. So if we had done an alias instead, where we didn't have new type here. Uh, my guy's not going to complain about any of this here because it's essentially just substituting int in here rather than our specialized subclass. So we don't we don't actually differentiate our type here at all. Uh, aliasing is mostly just used as a shortcut for spelling out the long type, whereas new type gives us a distinct separate type from the original type. Uh, is there anything else? I think that's all I wanted to cover. That's new type, as well as its difference with alias. Hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.